Hi everyone and welcome. Today I'm going to do a spoiler-free review for the Saga of the Light Isles by Juliette Merlier. This is an historical fantasy duology that consists of wolfskin and fox mask. If you're new here, Juliette Merlier is one of my favorite authors and I'm slowly but surely making my way through her entire works. And I know that most people know Daughter of the Forest, which is the first book in her Seven Waters series. And I'm so happy that more people are picking it up and loving it, because if you're unaware, that is my favorite book of all time. But I do think that her other works deserve some more recognition as well. And I do count Saga of the Light Isles among that, because I had a lot of fun while reading this series. And I think that if you like Juliette Merlier, you will definitely like this series as well. Now, she does something in this duology that she does in some of her other series as well, which is, this is more of a generational story. In the first book, you discover and meet and follow a couple of characters, but then in the second book, you meet their children, or some of their children at least, and you follow their journey. So because of that, each of these stories definitely has their own story and they almost feel as standalones. But I do think that this duology shines if you read them in the correct order. So starting with Wolfskin and then reading Fox Mask, because that is when you have the entire picture. But because these feel as standalones, I can talk about both of these without spoiling the other one. In the first book, Wolfskin, we meet the Viking boy Ivan. Ivan's true dream is to become a Wolfskin, which is a warrior of Odin. When he's still young, he meets Summerlet. Summerlet is completely different from Ivan, he's not a warrior at all, but somehow these two develop a strange sort of friendship. We follow Ivan throughout childhood into young adulthood, and his dream has come true. He is now a wolfskin who is very loyal to both his god as his superiors. Summerlet is now more of a political type of character who is very good at the intrigues at court. It has been decided that there's going to be an expedition to the Light Isles, and both Summerlet as Ivan are going to join. When they arrive at the Light Isles, they meet the natives, the people who have been living here for generations, and the story takes off after that. In the second book, Fox Mask, like I said, we follow some of the children of the characters that we have met in Wolfskin. And one of these children is Torvald. Torvald recently discovered who his father is, and he knows that his father left the islands before he was born. So his plan is to go on a journey on ship together with his friend Sam. When they're on water and they are already far away from shore, they realize that Crate has joined and they, she secretly got on the ship and now the three of them are going to try to find Torvald's father. They come ashore of an island that they don't know, they have no idea if Torvald's father is here, but they do meet up with the natives and all of a sudden they're in the middle of a year-long war between the natives and some mythical creatures, mythical other tribe that lives on a nearby island. And the story takes off from there. So like I said in the beginning of this video, I really enjoyed both of these stories. I do think that Wolfskin is the better book. So if you already didn't enjoy Wolfskin, I don't think that that will change when you pick up Fox Mask. But if you liked Wolfskin, definitely continue and read Fox Mask, because I think that that creates a very nice conclusion of this overarching arc and of this generational story. Now, I know that Juliette Merlier is very well known for the romance that she puts in her books and that she explores quite well. And yes, there is a romance in each of these books, but I don't think that this is the focus. This is probably the least romance-focused series by her that I have read at this point. So if you're not a big fan of romance, if you want to try Juliette Merlier, but you want to have a book that has some other themes that it explores, then I do think that The Saga of the Light Isles would be a good decision. In the first one, for example, you follow more Ivan and his coming-of-age story. Ivan is a very loyal and naive character, and you actually have the question of how far should loyalty go. When you're loyal to a person, but that person does despicable things, how do you respond? And this is something that Ivan needs to face and needs to go through, and it's more his journey and how he deals with that. It's more a story of friendship, other than a story of romance. Even though, yes, in that first book you do have a romance, and I absolutely adored it. In the second book, Fox Mask, you also have a romance. I wasn't the biggest fan of that romance because it feels like a love triangle. Even though it's not your typical love triangle, I got those feelings and I'm not the biggest fan of love triangles, so that's why I didn't like it. But in the box of being a love triangle, I do think that Juliette Merlier handled that quite well. But again, here, the focus is more on a character trying to find his father, trying to find himself, and also seeing how much do your parents define you and how much are you your own person or do you have the weight of who your parents are on your shoulders you also follow some other characters especially characters who again are very loyal to somebody who wants to see the good in people and 
because of that might not see what's actually there and you also follow their journey in actually realizing that they need to stop being so naive so again it's a story more of friendship and of family than of romance per se so i really enjoyed these two and i do think that you should read them as a duology now the pacing is of course slow. This is Juliette Merlier, it is going to be a slow pacing, but I do think that she has mastered when it needs to go a little bit faster, when she can slow down. And in general, I don't think that this duology dragged in any of the parts, and I think that the pacing fit the story. Something that she does, especially in the first book, that I really enjoyed, is that she focuses on that childhood, but it almost feels as a dream, where she goes quite quickly, but then there are just some instances that she focuses on and slows down. And these are not instances that on a bigger scale are quite important, but for that character and for understanding why that character is the way they are when they are grown up, these are very important moments in their childhood. So I really like how she handles that. And that's something that she also does in Daughter of the Forest with Sorka. So if you liked that and how she handled the beginning of that first book, then I do think that you will like what she does with Ivan's story and Ivan's childhood. When we then go over to technical choices and writing style, it might be important to know that this entire duology is written in third person past tense and that you have multiple POVs. But this is definitely not the type of series where you have a big cast of characters. In the first book, as well as in the second one, you meet one character and you actually stay with them for a pretty long time. In the first one, Ivan, you stay with Ivan for maybe the first half of the book before another character is introduced. And this is a character that you've already seen through Ivan's eyes, so you already know them somewhat. And I really like how close you stay with the characters. And again, this is something that Juliette Merlier does in her other works as well. If you know some of Juliette Merlier's works, you do know that she has a very whimsical and fairy tale-esque writing style, and fans of that will not be disappointed here. I don't think that it is as fairy tale-esque as Daughter of the Forest or the Seven Waters series, just because of the setting. You are following a Viking here, so it is not going to be as whimsical, but the signature writing style is definitely here. Now, I absolutely adore that writing style, and I know that a lot of Juliette Merlier's fans pick up her books because they want to have that specific writing style. They want to have that atmosphere. They want to have the description of the environment that our characters are in. They want to have the metaphors that are awfully, often closely connected to nature. But I do know that some people might find that more of a denser read and more difficult to get into. I do think that from what I've read by her so far, this is a good work to start with. And if you don't like this one because of the writing style, I don't think that you will like her other works either. I think that, for instance, the Brideg Chronicles is a much denser read. So if you start there and you're not really certain if you like it, I would still advise you to pick up something else by her because her writing style can vary in denseness a little bit. But this one was quite accessible in terms of Juliette Relier's works. So if you didn't like the writing style here, I would advise you to not try anything else by her because it's more or less similar. When we then go over to world building, fantastical elements and magic system, like I said in the beginning of this video, this is an historical fantasy. The Light of Isles is actually another name that's been given to the Orkney Islands of Scotland and these have been colonized by Vikings in the 8th and 9th century. So this is definitely historically accurate. And this is something that Juliet Merlier does, she does her research. So everything that happens in these books, the equipment that's being used and so on, are things that could actually happen in the time period that the story is based in. So that's something that I like, that it's quite realistic. But other than that, this is a work of fiction. In the Briday Chronicles, for example, you meet and follow characters that are based on historical figures. Here, the characters that you meet are completely fictional. Now, when we then go over to world building and how this is done, Juliet Merlier's focus is never world building. It takes place in our world and that's it. You don't get an elaborate overview of the political intrigues, of religion, anything like that you stay pretty close to the characters that you are following and you don't really get an overarching view of this entire world. But you do feel the setting that she chooses to put her story in. In the beginning, you have the very harsh climate of the Vikings, and then you go to the Isle of Lights. And here you have a very open climate, especially because you stay on shore. So you have the sea, you have the shore, you have the wind and the breeze, and you can really feel that when you are there. In the second book, when our three main characters are on that new island, I do think that this is based on Iceland and you can definitely feel the harsh climate when they arrive there. So I do think that she does a pretty good job at making you feel that you are there and to know the surrounding. More on 
a more personal level of the characters that we're following than with a wide scope of the entire world. When we then go over to fantastical elements and magic system, you're not going to find a magic system here like Brandon Sanderson, for example. Even so, you're not going to find a magic system here. This is fantasy because you have some fantastical elements. In this world, you have magical spirits. For example, you meet the fair folk in the Seven Water series. Here you have spirits. And the people who live in the Light Isles definitely believe in these spirits. You actually follow a priestess as one of the characters. And if you are very devoted and if you spend your time with these spirits and if you actually believe in them, you might be able to use that magic to your advantage. But it's not like a magic system, it's more magic of the land. And I quite enjoy that, it definitely gives it a fairy tale esque feeling, a very soft magic system that I quite like. I do think that the magic that you have, especially in the first book, is very low. You have Ivan, who believes in Odin and in all of those Norse gods, and then you meet a priestess of the island who believes in the spirits, but other than that, the magic remains quite low up until the very end. In the second book, it feels more magical, because you actually meet some of these magical beings. And it takes a little bit, in the beginning of the book you might not have that, but towards the end it definitely feels more magical than the first one. So, it's quite low in romance, but it's also quite low in magic in comparison to Juliet Merlier's other works. Now, when we then go over to the characters, like I said, in the first book you have, of course, Ivan and Summerlet, but you also have Nessa, and Nessa is a priestess that I talked about in my last section. Nessa is actually my favorite character of these three, so it's actually a shame that she only gets introduced around the halfway point. She is so strong and she is so determined to fight for her island, and like I said, as a priestess, she is very closely connected to that magic of nature that I quite enjoy. So yeah, she was definitely the most interesting character here. Ivent, as a viking, is very loyal, he's very naive, and to a point that it can be annoying and that you can question why he is the way he is. But I think that he needs to be like that for his character arc to have the impact that it has towards the ending. I also think that because you meet him when he's just a child and you go through his childhood and you see how people view him and how he starts viewing himself, that this is quite believable. Summerlet is a very dark character and he was definitely interesting to follow as well, but be aware, he's dark. Then in the second book, we follow again three characters. We have Torvald, we have Sam and we have Cray. And even though it might seem from my premise overview that Torvald is the main character, it's actually Cray. And here you have some similar character traits, but I'm not going to say who is who because this would spoil whose children they are. But you almost have the same dynamic. However, there is enough change that this is a new story. And in this one, you have a secondary character, a priest, that is my most favorite character of this entire duology. And that's something that I haven't seen in her other series, because most of the time when you have a secondary character and they start to become interesting, they become one of the main characters, either in that book or in the next book. But here this priest remained a secondary character, but it was such a strong arc that he had, that for this reason alone I would reread that duology and have a completely new idea about this priest. So, yeah. I really liked what she did with that secondary character here. I think that the main characters were, like I said, a little bit of the same that we saw in the first book, and because of that I might have liked the second one a little bit less, and I would have liked to see some more differences between the parents and the children. But it is what it is, and overall I do think that they are fleshed out enough to be enjoyable. So to conclude. As always, Juliette Merlier knocked it out of the park again. I don't think that this is my favorite duology by her, I actually do really enjoy the Seven Waters series more, especially because there is more magic and it feels more like a fairy tale retelling than this one, which is completely fair because Daughter of the Forest is a fairy tale retelling and this one is not. I think that this is a little bit harsher because of course you are following these Vikings. In the first book you have a pretty despicable character, which is something that you often don't have in her works, or if they are, they are definitely the antagonist, while here they are quite close to characters that we've come to love. So if you want to have something else, if you want to try Juliette Merlier and you want to have something that's a little bit lower on the romance heavy scale, then this is definitely one that I would recommend, especially if you like Viking-esque and Norse myth stories, then this is something that you will find here. However, if you are completely new to Juliette Merlier and you want to try some romance heavy works and if you want to have that more fairytale-esque feeling, like I said, I do think that Daughter of the Forest is still the way to go. 
And if you like that one, then definitely come and read this duology, because in terms of writing style, it's again superb, and it's the same of what we have come to expect of Juliette Merlier. So this was everything that I wanted to say about the Saga of the Light Isles, and I hope that this was helpful to you. Please let me know if you've read the Saga of the Light Isles before or anything else by Juliet Merlier and how you liked it. And of course, if you haven't read this duology yet, let me know if you're now interested. As always, I hope that you enjoyed the video and see you next time. Bye!